Okay, here we are. We're doing our Gross Anatomy series, and I'm titling this Directional Terms. Now let me get my laser pointer started here. Directional Terms, or Terms of Location. Now we're going to find out that there's even more names, and the reason I tell you all the names is because sometimes you'll see one and not the others, and you should know all the varieties of names. So here's terms of direction and then orientation terms. So obviously you can see there's a many choices. It's all talking about terms that are often antonyms of each other and we'll get into that here shortly. So here on this little graphic are a picture of two animals and I'm going to cover up one of those things so I can enlarge this. Obviously, we have a dog on the left side of the screen and a line on the right side of the screen. And you could say these are both quadrupeds. They're moving on four feet, four legs. And they're in their normal position. So the area that's nearest the backbone is called dorsal. And the opposite of dorsal is their ventral surface. So then you can also have lateral surface too. This is the left lateral surface of that animal. You might say, why am I saying left? Because it's their left, not our left. Obviously, this is the right side of the screen. But as they're coming towards us, you would say, let's say you saw a wound down here. The line has a wound on its front left leg. Okay, so these are two examples of animals in their normal position but you should know that no matter what orientation the animal takes as far as being on its side or in dorsal recumbency like this animal it's in dorsal recumbency remember dorsal is the surface by its backbone and then therefore this is ventral and it looks like this animal has a small wound here maybe they're getting ready to just uh, clean the wound I'm not sure, I don't know the, the story of the animal here, but the animal is in dorsal recumbency. So this, you might say, well, look at the top surface. Isn't top always dorsal? No. In this case, the upper surface is the animal's ventral surface. So that's one take home message right away. These terms apply to all animals, no matter what their positions are. And I guess I'm gonna have to say, quadrupeds are our focus. Okay, so now I'd like to go through some slides I've picked out from the internet just to show you how different people display these terms and use the terms in different ways. Okay, so let's go here. The directional terms provide a common language for accurately and clearly describing body structures regardless of the position of the animal's body. So these terms are used when you see an wa animal walking by you or you see the animal on a surgery table in dorsal recumbency. They're all the same and we'll go through these. They usually occur in pairs. That's another thing to remember. And so the pairs have opposite meanings of each other. The one word that's a pair to another is the opposite. So we're going to do this. Let me get this <clears throat> picture uh, blown up here in, a little, in the middle here. So let's just look at this caudal is going back but notice if you're in the head region you can't say cranial and that's a mistake some people made rostral is the preferred term because you're going th towards the nose which is usually at the end of the head region of these animals remember that pair they're opposites then you've got caudal and cranial that's appropriate here you've got caudal cranial even back here you can use the term cranial if you're moving in the cranial direction, right? So you got to remember that. This picture also has the transverse plane, which we've gone through in another lesson. That's perpendicular, cuts an animal perpendicular to the long axis, and there's many transverse planes then. And of course, you remember that generates a cross section if you looked at the cut end. Then you have a dorsal plane which is also called the frontal plane. And I always liken it to an animal walking in water. The surface of the water is the dorsal plane or the frontal plane. And so there would be many of those as well. 
So it sections an animal into some upper portion and lower portion. Then let's look at some of these other terms. You've got, uh, here we go, you've got the carpus over here. You've got the dorsal surface of this front leg. And then you have the palmar surface, which is the opposite. Dorsal surface, palmar surface on the two front legs. Then you've got proximal, which means closer to a point of reference. And distal means further from a point of reference. So if I've got th looking at this spot here, this spot is proximal, this is distal. Um, it's not always used on the legs. You can use it any place in the body as well, given the right terms. Okay, then you got the dorsal surface of the rear legs, and then it's plantar uh, surface, plantar surface versus palmar. So remember that. Maybe you can remember that's more like the palm of your hands. The front legs are equivalent to your palms, you know, in a stretch here. Okay. So now, let me get that out of the way and get another figure here, because the more you look at, the more you interpret other people's uh, definitions, the better off you are. So this one says, this is another slide off the internet, the anatomical terms of location, notice how everybody uses different terminology, is used to avoid ambigu ambiguity, sorry. Uh, they're universal terms. And you try to avoid using top or bottom because you can't say this is the top side of the animal because if it's in dorsal recumbency, then you're messed up. So that's a just a simple little figure there re, reaffirming these terms. Okay, another picture slide I got off the internet, whatever you want to call them. This is labeled directional terms, right? Notice how there is not one way to designate all these terms. I like this one because it kind of puts them in pairs, but I have a, like a correction or an addition. Now, anterior posterior is seldom used in quadrupeds. Okay, so I think this slide is actually from a human anatomy site. So obviously we would prefer cranial or caudal, but the anterior portion of a human, let's say, or a primate, would be its surface that's most forward when you're walking. So you know your, your belly button is on your anterior side. Let's put it that way. Then posterior is the opposite, right? So it's kind of hard to say towards tail, so not sure how they, why they included the word tail, but anyway. Cranial caudal, preferred for quadrupeds. So then here they are again, and they got head region pertaining to the tail region. Then you've got dorsal ventral. Dorsal, towards the back, and see, they shouldn't use top of the animal, right? Because maybe they're assuming the animal's standing, but dorsal is the surface or the region nearest its spinal cord, its backbone. And then on the other side, let's say where the umbilicus is, that's the ventral surface of an animal. Then they've left one word out, but I want to show you medial, right? Towards the median line, medial plane, that's the plane that divides an animal into a perfect left and right half as far as you can. But they forgot the antonym of that, okay? So then I'm going to put this in it's lateral, okay? So medial is towards the midline of the animal. There's medial. Lateral means toward the sides of the animal, S-I-D-E-S, the sides. So there's something that, that's the value of looking at all these things on the internet and making, interpreting them and saying how you could maybe improve them. And then of course, distal versus proximal, yes, away from a center or origin, or I would say, point of reference and proximal is towards the center or origin or point of reference because you can use these terms even when you're talking about inside the kidney and looking at the nephron right you have there's a distal convoluted tubule and a proximal convoluted tubule so it doesn't always apply to like gross anatomy okay 
Again, from the internet, I didn't make this. This is a very good image of an animal. It's got all our um, terms, or most of them, I should say, labeled. You can look at it again. That's the value of this. You can pause this and look at, you know, proximal versus distal, cranial versus caudal. Um, they have a nice text here explaining the planes. The one that's not really well, I guess it is showing. See this faint plane here? That, if it goes down the middle of the animal, that would be called the median plane or the mid-sagittal plane. You should know those are two equals. But if this plane right here that I'm outlining here is off to one side, off to the left of the middle or off to the right, then you call it a sagittal plane. And they'd say it divides the body into unequal left or right halves. Okay, so this is a nice text here. I'm going to let you read it. You can pause this thing. Okay. Remember, I'm picking things out of the internet, looking at them, critiquing them. And the more you look at, the more you can interpret these. Okay. So this slide is calling them body directions. You know, I'm not sure if I like that. But the point is, they're pointing out some of these terms and the antonyms that they truly are. Ventral versus dorsal. Cranial, caudal of course but then if you're in the head region you have to do rostral versus caudal right and they're throwing in this thing cephalic also means head pertaining to the head then they got proximal distal right proximal closer to a point of reference distal more distant if that uh, helps you remember that the palmar surface versus the versus the plantar surface Okay, and they've got these labeled palmar, palmar are, is H here, this surface, versus the I surface, plantar. Then you have anterior versus posterior, and they don't really have that depicted here. But remember, that's hardly ever used in quadrupeds. But here's like an example. Sometimes when you're talking about some internal structures like the anterior pituitary gland versus the posterior pituitary gland. So it is used in domestic animals, but not so much on the external anatomy. Superior versus inferior. That's also not shown here, but superior usually means above a certain point, and inferior means below a certain point. And then you have superficial versus deep. Well, superficial means closer to the skin, or we could say integument, if you remember that term. And then deep means deep within the body, the body core. Okay, so remember, we're looking at these uh, pictures I find on the internet. It's kind of fun to critique them. Now, this one says anatomical terms of location. Okay, look at almost every slide had a different way to designate these same things. That's why it's a little confusing out there. So we have dorsal ventral, of course, and the picture refers to that. You can be down here and move in a dorsal direction, right? Caudal versus cranial, talking about the whole animal, not the head region specifically. And then they've got proximal versus distal. But it doesn't always have to be the leg, so that's be one thing I would critique. You could have proximal and distal here. Let's say the tail head is the point of reference. And you want to compare this spot to this spot. Well, this spot is proximal to the point of reference and this spot over here is distal to the point of reference so be aware of that it's not always those legs like a lot of these diagrams are showing okay more fun with um, pictures I found on the internet now this is calling it anatomical terms of direction and they're comparing a primate a biped in this case a person versus a quadruped and notice how in the human they're using anterior versus posterior whereas that does not show up on the dog and then they're giving the equivalent the ventral surface let's say the belly button area which is here also for the dog versus nearer the backbone which is dorsal nearer the backbone dorsal and then we've got cranial versus caudal. And notice that's not really showing up on the human picture. Because a lot of times you might have superior up here, 
and inferior down here, depending on what structures you're talking about. But again, it's a nice little comparison. You got to be careful what kind of what animal are you talking about? Are you talking about a primate or a quadruped, whatever, when you're using some of these terms? Okay, we're still looking at all these uh, slides that I found on the internet. It's kind of fun to critique them. And, you know, most of these lessons are made for beginners or people that need a review. So, you know, if you're an expert at this, this is getting uh, boring to you, but I'm not look, doing this for experts. Anatomical directions, okay? Cranial or cephalic means towards the head, caudal away from the head, medial towards the midline of the body, the medial plane, and it's also called the mid sagittal plane, lateral, the sides of an organism. So, like these are a pair. If you're not medial, you're lateral. So, I like that about this slide. Proximal closest to the base or origin or point of reference. Notice how I say, you know, if you designate a point of reference, then you can use proximal and versus distal. Distal is more distant. And then down here, we're just saying most of our animals are bilaterally uh, symmetrical. They have bilateral symmetry. Okay, here's a busy slide, but I like it because there's very few of these uh, pictures that will ever compare a domestic animal versus a human, or you could say primate. Okay, so they have left, right, are the same, right? Now notice towards the head, we usually say cranial, but just like I pointed out earlier, just a couple slides ago, perhaps one or two, superior is often used when you have an animal that's standing up on two legs and you want to go up towards the head, you would say superior. Uh, like for example, there's a in humans, there's a superior vena cava and then an inferior vena cava. If you're in the head, notice head only, you say rostral. Humans, you can still say rostral here. They're saying nasal. I guess I'm okay with that. Caudal versus inferior again. The back, I like this. Dorsal for the animal, but posterior for the human or primates. Towards the belly, the umbilicus, right? That's the ventral surface. Then that's the anterior surface for humans and primates. Going to the medial versus lateral, I like that. I like deep versus superficial. Proximal versus distal. Palmer versus plantner, I like that. And then down here they've got, I'm not sure what they've got. They've got the, okay, the front, yeah, sorry. The front of the forelimb and the hind, hind leg are called dorsal in, in uh, animals and it's called anterior in humans. Yes, after I read that, now I understand that. I agree with this. This is a very nice table. Okay, more tables off the internet. It gets a little, you know, redundant here, but I'm doing this for beginners. Uh, directional terms, okay? That, I think that was one of my things that I put down. This is actually probably for humans, but let's see. Yep, right, left, okay, superior, inferior, right away. That usually applies to quadrupeds, right? Cephalic versus caudal, anterior versus posterior, ventral, dorsal, proximal, distal, lateral, medial, deep, superficial. So you can pause this and refresh your mind on what these mean. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we've done this again and again. But again, it's if you're first learning this, like I said, if it's your if it's your first time learning this, this is you know a good thing to do. Okay, let's do another one. Orientation and directional. I guess back here it's the the more the term is the whole table is orientation and directional terms. Not too bad. Superior versus inferior. Remember that they're referring to humans now. Anterior versus posterior. Okay. I'm just showing this one to show you how many different ways, different books, different uh, sites, websites display these things. It can be confusing if you, you know, don't know how all these terms relate to each other. Okay, here finally we get a quadruped and let's see if its terms are right. So that's what you do. You find 
diagrams and you've got rostral versus caudal you know that's good cranial versus caudal the dorsal aspect of the animal the ventral aspect of the animal if it's down the dead center that's medial median plane off to the side either side is lateral right proximal distal cranial caudal dorsal palmar dorsal plantar I guess again notice how everybody is doing proximal distal on one of the legs of these diagrams and again I want to reiterate you can do something up here with distal or proximal if you set like let's say the tail head is the point of reference then this point is proximal to the point of reference and this area is distal so I can use it up here that's what I want to add to this slide okay now I'm gonna speed up here a little bit the reason I'm including all these pictures are there are so many different ones that you can learn from and maybe some are better for you than others so I'm just gonna like I'm not gonna to point to anything on this slide you can pause it if you want and then go on I'm gonna go on okay again I'm just gonna show you what I found on the internet directional terms they're using that I think we've done that once before left or right is the animals left or right not your left or right or not the left on the screen or the right on the screen cranial caudal rostral of course right ventral dorsal on the upside let me enlarge this cat for a minute it shows you especially you know if you're uh, need a refresh on this transverse plane Okay, and there's many of those. You could have the transverse plane back here. Again, you can pause this. I will probably bring that other animal down. Okay, and then what I want to put down here is, uh, or point out, I should say, is there's this median plane, also called the medial plane, and it's also called the mid sagittal plane. Divides an animal roughly into a perfect left or right half. If the plane is off to one side and you get an imperfect left and right halves, then you call it a sagittal plane. And so you know there's many, many of those. That sagittal plane could be over here. That's what I wanted to take home with this uh, slide. Now, I just want to show you this one again because the last time I forgot to point this out. Notice again, they're kind of confining proximal and distal to the leg and you know that's not true that's the only reason I'm showing this again and again you can look at it and read it all you want so and I thought this was a neat picture it's made by Tracy here or I guess it was taken by Tracy I don't know if she's studying vet anatomy or vet tech stuff or just regular anatomy but I like this idea where she has these three dogs and she's labeled this so this dog up here is in left lateral recumbency that's the left side of the animal that's on the floor and it's laying down it's you know sleeping I guess so left lateral recumbency then this bloodhound has right lateral recumbency it's laying on its right side and then here's something that we don't see in print very often but sternal or ventral recumbency yes it's laying on its chest its sternum so good job Tracy I like that for uh, a review of these terms. We don't have a uh, ventral recumbency. Well, I guess we have a ventral recumbency. We don't have a dorsal recumbency. Okay, so here's a dog that's in dorsal recumbency. And I just want to point out how then a lot of times uh, this might be dog might be getting it's a female dog it looks like so it's maybe getting ready for an ovario hysterectomy which is also called of course a spay job and they've got the animal intubated this is hooked to an anesthetic machine uh, inhalation anesthesia and they've got monitors going on and they're trying to keep the most of the animal's body away from the metal table because you should know that during surgery some animals will tend to develop hypothermia right hypo hypothermia but just showing you the dorsal recumbency the ventral surface is exposed and so then we're going to make an incision here in the mid ventral aspect of this animal okay i just want to you know here's an animal 
that's actually probably being uh, confined to left lateral recumbency, right? It looks like it maybe doesn't want to be like that, but for some reason, maybe a demonstration, whatever, it's left lateral recumbency for that pretty dog. And then here's a cow. I'm just practicing these terms now. And so in this cow, she's got right lateral recumbency, right? She's laying on her right side. It's a cow. I can see the mammary gland. It's a Holstein, by the way, if you're not familiar with it. And then you can kind of see this protrusion here. Um, and this is probably due to the rumen being more on the left side of the abdominal cavity. So when they lay down on their right side, you get a little kind of bump up here because the rumen is full of a lot of fluid and uh, I'll say gas and it tends to protrude up above, above the surface. So this cow, Holstein cow, is in right lateral recumbency. Okay, again, we're just going to show some pictures and use these anatomical terms. This happens to be a couple border collies and you can see that this white line actually goes down the medial plane of this dog. And so this is the dog's left side versus the right side, right lateral versus left lateral. Okay, and in this dog, it's showing us its pretty teeth. And you can see those canines out there. And so it's also got a white line that does the medial plane. And then if you remember, if there's a plane that goes this way, that's the frontal or dorsal plane. That would be a plane um, that if they're walking into water, okay? And then, let me get these guys out of the way. And then on this slide, I wanna just use maybe the, word, uh, the words proximal and distal to show you that they're not always used with the front or rear leg. So I got this picture. The legs are basically hidden. But if I use the nose as a point of reference, then this spot is proximal to the nose and this spot is distal to the nose. So how could I use these? Let's say there's two wounds on this wolf. There's a wound here and there's a wound here. And I'm trying to di direct somebody to the front wound here, the more frontal, the more front wound. I might say, let's work on the wound that's proximal to the nose. The distal wound will do second. Okay, so I could use that. I just want to make the point that it doesn't, distal, proximal, don't always refer to one of the legs and a point on the legs. So again, showing something from the internet, and I'll look here, and here's like, remember, if you know all this stuff and you work with it, you can correct mistakes. And there's a mistake on this slide, because you know that if you're talking about the whole animal and you go towards the rear, yes, you can say caudal, but if you're going towards the front, you don't use rostral, okay? That's incorrect. Only rostral only refers to when you're in the head region. So then I would say that term rostral really should be replaced. So I'm going to like cross that out in a blunt kind of way and say, gee, yes, I wish they would have put cranial there. But this shows you, if you study this enough, you can say that's incorrect or there's a better way of saying that. And I would just say rostral there is incorrect. It's not like there's a better way of doing it. It's just wrong. So finally, I just wanna say, this is the end of the directional terms uh, video of this series in gross uh, anatomy and uh, hope you enjoyed it.